The Wiggles, remember them? Well, they are growing their fan base. Well-known children's group now getting the attention of older folks through TikTok. Here's ABC's Will Gans with what's making Purple Wiggle so popular. Remember the Wiggles? Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. They're not wiggling like they used to back in 91. We're gonna do the monkey. <laughs> The Purple Wiggle, a.k.a. John Pierce, taking over TikTok, where he's racked up nearly 10 million views in the last five days alone. So what's the Purple Wiggle and his biceps doing on TikTok anyway? To create fun content, fun quirky content that does tie in my, my character now and myself and trying to find that balance where it does sort of appeal to, uh, to a wide demographic. Just check the comment section. I'm about to risk it all for the Purple Wiggle. A little background on this red-hot purple wiggle. John Pierce is known for winning Australia's Got Talent back in 2010 with Australian pop music group Justice Crew. He's also a certified personal trainer, and he competed in Ninja Warrior Australia. And in a devastating turn of events, he's married. What yeah. was your history with the wiggles like prior to becoming the hot one? <laughs> well, I'm 31. The Wiggles have been around 31 years, so I grew up with the Wiggles. It's still super crazy to think that I am what my childhood was. And while John has helped the Wiggles find an all-new audience on TikTok, he's proud to be part of the 2023 version of the group. The diverse ages, different races, different backgrounds, you know, different ethnicities, you know, different experiences, and I think it's it's great to see, you know, the majority of, of, of what the society is on on Wiggly TV. And one last hard-hitting capital J journalism question for the world's hottest wiggle. John, is there any chance that the Wiggles are going to play Coachella this year? Or oh, that's 100 percent. Coachella would be the next the next stop. The Wiggles are going on tour here in North America in the fall. It'll be the first time John is on American soil as the Purple Wiggle. Get your tickets now, people. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. <laughs> Didn't know you liked the Wiggles so much. I like the new turn they're taking. <laughs> Speaking of popular, I don't know if they wiggle, but there's my hit <laughs> feel. I, I actually saw the Wiggles went to live concert on my yes. birthday one time years ago, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Because of, the, because of the boys, right? That's my excuse, yeah. So. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, it is National Pie Day, so feast your pies on this. Oh, yes. And the greater of this delicacy, we can't wait to bite into it, is Jan Reisman from Rooster Crow Bakery. Thank Welcome. you. Oh, you brought Thank pie. you for having me. Now, how do you cut the perfect slice? You know, You're it's a little us, bit, right? I'm going to tell you guys, there's a, there's ways and then there's ways to cut the perfect slice of pie. First of all, follow your heart. Okay. okay. You can't just dig in with a fork. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. If no one's looking, you can. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. But you know, different pies need different types of knives. Okay. We will learn all about that coming up as well. And we have a contest. Look at what some of our folks have made here. There are five of our pies and Jen is going to be the judge yes. of these delicacies. And what's your favorite pie? We want to find out about that. All right, Debbie Davis from God's Rescue is here, and you have got a puppy. And you go through a lot of dog food, right? We do, sir. About okay. 40 bags a week. Wow. They need help. your help. We've got a way, <laughs> and how you can help them out. Plus, what's the best eyeshadow color? For yep. your peepers, uh, Elsa Fernandez from Eye Candy Boutique will tell you all that and more coming up when SA Live continues. Welcome back. It's 56 outside. We'll be up around 61 this afternoon, but the big story is that chance of rain that arrives tonight into tomorrow morning. 70% chance of rain into your Tuesday morning with a high of 60. And by the way, we'll uh, be going live on the app a couple times uh, throughout this event to keep you up to date. If you want basically weather on demand, visit the KSAT weather app and we'll be there for you. Otherwise, it does clear out for the rest of the work week. Thank you so much, Justin. And thank you for watching the news at noon with us on this Monday. Favorite pie? Um, the one I just saw at SA Live, it looks like a meat pie with tater tots on it. As opposed to like lemon meringue? Oh, I like savory. Mm. I like savory pies. Savory pie? Okay. Yeah. Lemon meringue or? Key lime. I'll, I'll go for key lime. Key lime? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what they got down there. They got a lot of pies down there. Mike and Fiona. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live.
Oh, hello, and happy Monday. Feast your pies on this. It's National Pie Day, and we're putting our SA Live baking skills to the test. Coming up, good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. Five pies, one for every day. We got the whole week covered. There you go. There and go. one of your pies are in there. I know. <laughs> hey, and I'm my ghost Ray Age, and yes, we could enjoy pie every day, but the big question is, what is your favorite pie? Was it that one that grandma used to make? Huh? Fresh out of the oven. Is it a key lime pie? Is it a coconut it? pie? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. All right, well, today is the day to live free and pie hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I just read it. Okay, all right, they definitely don't mess around at one local bakery where every slice is, wait for it, pie -ficked. Our producer, Robert, <laughs> that's all of his puns today right now. Jenny Rice, an owner of Rooster Crow Bakery, is here to help us get ready for a couple of sweet holidays and slice to meet you. Ah, stop. Hello, hello, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, look, just, just we, she brought these pies in and we- He can't even get the words out. I know, I know. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous Let's Take a that second pie to looks. appreciate them, mm. the smells, the textures. Coconut cream, and this is that apple, and this thing is what, about four inches tall over there? So, all right. We're talking about cutting a pie. We're talking about cutting a pie, how you should cut a pie, and what type of pie you have. Um, so, we have two different pies in front of us. We have a custard based pie with whipped cream, and we have a double crust pie with a fruit filling. When you're cutting custard based pies, you want to use a nice, sharp chef's knife. Uh, dipped in hot water, and that way you get nice, those nice, perfect Instagram slices. Oh, oh. hot water, okay. Hot water. hot water is a trick. You just dip your knife carefully in hot water, wipe it off with a clean mm -hmm. towel, and then cut your pie, and it'll give you those nice, perfect slices. So it kind of melts the cream a little bit, right, as it's right. touching the pie? Right, oh, okay. okay. Oh, I now, know this one, and then you can you be have, the hero. You, you have already cut, right? I already cut it for you guys. Okay, so what's the, is there a technique to getting it out of there or is it being just, gentle mm -hmm. so okay. you want to go straight down straight down and then kind of push towards oh. the center and then lift up and would you call that the instagram pie it's the yeah. instagram pie if you're oh. quick so it doesn't jump off your spatula okay and look at how beautiful that is here i'm gonna get one more for you here oh okay do i get the taste here yes sure it's staring me in the face so mm. and there we go okay <laughs> Okay, sorry. Did so I do it? Before it's good stuff. Thank you. And then before we go to the next the pie here, um, what sets your pies apart? You know, all of the love and the commitment from myself and from my team is what really makes our pies special. Um, you know, we put a lot of work and a lot of effort into making the crust, into making the fillings, topping everything, and then cutting it for you. Um, and so that's really what sets us apart. You know, we use um, classic flavors, but we also do funky combinations as well. And you know, at the bakery, we have a variety of pies every day. So each time you come in, you're probably gonna see something a little bit different. And there's gonna be things that you recognize and you know, things that you can learn about too. All right, so now. Cutting the apple pie, the double cutting crust Cutting the pie, double crust pie. Because, I mean, a lot of times you try and do this and it, you, you wanna let it cool first, because sometimes you cut a pie and then it goes and it's just Pies need to soup. rest. All baked goods, anything that comes out of the oven, it needs to. What? Oh. It needs to rest. Sorry. I'm just gonna stand over here while you gesture away. <laughs> and the secret is in the knife too, right? The secret is in the knife. For a double crust pie, you want to use a serrated knife. Just like you would a loaf of bread. Just like you would a loaf of bread, that gentle sawing action is what's gonna be able to uh, give you a nice or cut pie. Gentle, that way it's not all mangled and crazy. Sawing. And is it best to go all the way across like I'm doing right now instead of trying to just cut one little wedge? If you're trying to get even numbers, if you want a specific number of slices from your pie, it's easiest to start in half and then go from there. Okay. And so just gentle all the way down, push it through. And you said the whole trick is too, you gotta get that right down there in the you corner. You gotta get it in the corner in the wall of that pie. Okay, right down there. Oh yeah, okay, now should Nicely I go across done. the other way? Or you can go across the other way. Okay. Okay, and so you have some Valentine's Day treats for us too here that you brought, right? I do. 
So we're doing a couple different mix boxes at the bakery um, and they kind of go from small, medium and large. Our largest mix box comes with a miniature pie um, and then the other ones come with a variety of items. We have some rainbow caramel popcorn, we have the sugar skull lover cookies, the brown butter chocolate chip cookies, our rice krispie treats, which aren't your average rice krispie treats. And why all types aren't of things. they your, a your average rice krispie treats? You know, because again, you know, we put that love in there, but we also use burnt marshmallows, brown butter, and almond toffee chunks. And if folks had been to the Hotel Emma at one point, they right. might remember that taste, right? Right, right. You know, I came up. Is he going to do it? Is he going to oh. do it? It's done. Oh, Yay. Nice. Quick, Where am I go going? There. Where am I going? Go okay. there. Go there. Go. Yes. There we go. Beautiful. I lost one little apple right on the nut, but that, yeah, the Instagram picture. Hey. <laughs> pretty, that's a pretty good slice. I've never been so nervous slicing pie in all my life. So. so at the Hotel Emma. At the Hotel Emma, you know, I was the opening pastry chef for that property, which is why I moved to San Antonio in 2015. And, uh, you know, I came up with that flavor combination on a whim. I never gave it much thought and it just took off. I believe they're still making, uh, making that Rice Krispie Treat over there today. And you know, I've been making it since 2015 and from pop-ups to working at different restaurants. I've, it's just kind of followed me. I have to make it. We had Love samples it. of those Rice Krispie yep. Treats. And so yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right, for more information on Rooster Crow Bakery, just head to our website salive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, and coming up at 1.30, it's our third annual SA Live Amateur Pie Baking Contest. Five homemade pies from the SA Live team face off. Which one takes the top spot? That is still to come. Speaking of made from scratch sweets, Rose Hip Market is the newest shop in the Almost Park area, serving up baked goods, comfort food, and coffee too. Yep, went from a coffee trailer to a brick and mortar this year, and our Jen Tobias Trusky went to check it out, so take a look. Today on SA Live Support Local, we take you to one of the newest coffee shops in town and we are going to sample the menu and show you everything that you can experience here at Rose Hip Market. We're so excited about expanding Rose Hip Coffee, the trailer, into a brick and mortar space. And so I'm here with my partner right now, and it has been such a wonderful experience, really, building on the brand that we already had and expanding to cater to this neighborhood as well. And so coming to Rose Hip Market, you can expect the same coffees with our in-house syrups. Uh, you can expect our pastries, but we've also expanded so that we now have grab-and-go foods. We have a frozen section with prepared meals and we have an entire retail section too. I think what's going to happen as time goes on is we're going to lean uh, more deeply into that pantry part of our identity and we're really trying to focus on local people who make jams or bread or um, whatever it is, um, tea, candles, things like that. I kind of think your local farmer's market in a brick and mortar. Katie tells me every food item here is sourced from Central Texas, adding to the freshness of the ingredients. The menu will rotate from month to month, and every weekend you can also enjoy brunch. Along with your coffee favorites, their signature lattes include their homemade botanical-inspired syrups. The concept started with a coffee trailer, but this duo is now operating the new brick and mortar located at 120. 20 West Almost Drive connected to the Nick's Realty Building. My mom is the broker and she's also one of the partners and it was really important to her to put something new in this building next to Nick's to complement it and with COVID being such a catalyst for people working from home, for agents enhancing and redoing their home offices, we just wanted to re-energize the space a little bit. So Tinsley and I are really excited to be here. We met growing up here in high yeah. school and we both kind of went away for college and post-grad and then moved back and so it's been really exciting coming back to the neighborhood that we grew up in and being yeah. able to create a space that we wish we had when we were growing up. Yeah. And so we're super excited to be able to provide that to the neighborhood. If you're not hungry or thirsty, you can come here for gift ideas. From baby items to cookbooks to earrings and everything in between, you're definitely supporting local when you shop here. They always come in 
feeling like they've escaped to somewhere else, um, which I think has been a lot of fun. I've had a great time here at Rose Hip Market. Be sure to come check them out. They're open Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 p.m. and on the weekends from 8 to 4 p.m. You can try their made from scratch pastries or one of these delicious coffee drinks, my favorite, and go to is the lavender rosemary. I'm gonna give that a try and be sure to come check them out. For more information, to keep up with them on social media as well, you can head over to salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan that QR code on your screen. All right, cheers. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah, real cute. We went in there for uh, coffee a couple of weeks ago. So, oh where the circle is right there, McCollum Almost Drive, and HEB is right down here, and it's right there, right by Feliz Modern. And they do have uh, brunch every Saturday and Sunday, and it's located, like I said, right near Feliz Modern there in Almost Park. Excellent. Still ahead on the show. Have stunning eyes no matter what the color. We've got tips to make your peepers pop and dazzle your Valentine. But first, it's easier than ever for you to help our pet rescues get much needed supplies and all that dog food. Hear about a new program and the first local rescue that will benefit. That's next on SA Live. Okay, just look at that face, oh my goodness. But he's attached to a man. very big body. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, you know, it takes a, oh, are we boring you there? <laughs> yeah. uh, of course, for local pet rescues, it takes a lot to take care of these little guys, especially when they have feet that big. And those big giant bags of food, one local rescue goes through about 40 of them in a week. Yes, and Debbie Davis, Chief of Operations at God's Dogs Rescue, and Danielle Gunter, Executive Director for the Puppy Food Bank. They're here to tell us about this new effort to help feed our furry friends. Mm -hmm. Hey there! Hi, how are okay. you? Let's start with the obvious. Who did you bring with you? We have Tagus and Oliver with us today. They're three-month-old German Shepherd mixed puppies. And they were a litter of ten, nine boys and one girl, rescued off the streets of San Antonio. And so we have six of them left. You said you found mom in a box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in a box on a side of a, somebody put the box out there for her at least, yeah. and she had the puppies in the box. Okay, oh well God. you can tell by those paws on my arm, these guys, and already my arms are tired mm -hmm. holding this guy through the commercial break, they're going to be big dogs, they need a lot of food, and you go through a ton of food too. Yeah, we do, just at our primary location, go through about 40 bags a week. 40 wow. bags a week, okay? And Danielle, what is the Puppy Food Bank and why was it created? So the Puppy Food Bank is a virtual food bank. We started it in October of 22, so just a few months ago. Um, and really it was started by our board members. They have been avid animal lovers. They have their own dogs. And uh, probably about eight months ago, one of them actually had adopted a dog from God's Dogs. And they just fell in love with the mission and everything that they do. And one of the really interesting things is that they kept hearing over and over again, not just from God's Dogs, but a lot of the organizations that they work with involving animals, is that they're overcrowded. A lot of people adopted during COVID. They wanted that companionship. Everybody went back to work, right. and now they're surrendering because they don't have the time. And with inflation, they don't have the resources. And so we, they put their heads together and really said, what can we do to help alleviate some of that, that growth and alleviate some of the, the painfulness of having so many dogs there? And it kept coming up over and over again, let's supply dog food. And so it was created, the Puppy Food Bank. Um, we're very excited about it. God's Dogs is our first official partnership here in San Antonio. We're hoping to have more. And we really wanna look at supporting those rescues that are a little bit smaller. They maybe don't have the capacity or the bandwidth to constantly be chasing down those dollars and those resources to be able to provide for one of the biggest expenses, which is, of course, dog food. And with you doing it, a dollar goes a lot farther than if I yes. went and bought a bag of dog food, you buy in bulk, and it's it's not as though it's by Amazon. You just get it directly from the suppliers, right? Yes. So because we're virtual, we do. Um, viewers can always go online, make a donation for as little as eleven dollars a month, thirty-seven cents a day. Um, anybody who does that will get this amazing puppy food bank tote. We're so very excited about that. But that eleven dollars is really going to help hundreds of pets because what's going to happen is we work directly with those distributors. They will bring the dog food to places like God's Dogs. They're able not only to support their dogs on their campuses, but also to support the fosters that are through their program. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest keys is that so many of these smaller organizations, and they're not even that small, they have so many um, animals, but and they support so many animals, but they rely heavily on fosters and they need mm -hmm. that support. And in order to get more fosters, if they're able to say, we can help provide that dog food because of the partnership with Puppy Food Bank, we're able to make a bigger difference. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And so how do other rescues, of course, become partners? 
So they can always go to puppyfoodbank.org. We have a rescue page. They can go on apply. We'll pull the application. We work with them to figure out how much dog food do you need on a monthly basis? What types of animals are you having come into the shelter? We are currently supporting um, dogs at the moment and that they align with our mission because we really want to support those no kill pet rescues. And this then opens up more funds because you're trying yes. to expand and then to have some of the, the resources, the food to go for volunteers and fosters, which Absolutely. you need a lot, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's instrumental in what we do in being able to continue our mission. Okay, and what can we expect from God's Dogs Rescue well, this we're year? We're super excited this year. We just bought five acres next door to where we are now. And so the goal is to build um, indoor outdoor space with air conditioning and heat because right now we, we do not have that. And so um, not necessarily to expand our numbers because we are higher than we've ever been and don't want to be at this number <laughs> at over 600 dogs, but um, it'll allow us to um, Spread the, spread the dogs right. out and have it, you know, just a better situation. And um, this, this situation here with the Puppy Food Bank is just instrumental for, for us and so many rescues in San Antonio that need help. If you would like to donate to the Puppy Food Bank or God's Dogs or adopt one of these little baby, these big babies and <laughs> the big ones, just head over to SALive.com, click on the ad scene on SALive time, just scan that QR code right there at the bottom of your screen. Oh, I wish I could take you home. Thank you, ladies. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Still ahead on SA Live, bling for the new year, deals on handbags, tech savvy savings, and a Cuisinart. It's all on our brand new Insider Deals Roundup. And no matter what their color, you can have eyes that pop. We teach you how to turn heads with just a look and some clever makeup tips. You don't want to miss this. You're watching SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, want to turn heads with just a look? We've got the tricks you need to know how to make those peepers pop. And our dear friend from, as you see, Eye Candy Boutique is here to tell us how to turn your eyes into candy. I don't know. I'm to say <laughs> Sorry, down We're okay. still thinking about that pie from is earlier. It, yeah, yeah, yeah so, exactly. It, yeah. Yeah. Gonna turn them into candy. So, yeah. Yeah. yes, something like that. Eye All candy. about the Take right away, Elsa. eye shadow. <laughs> exactly. So, Eye color and eyeshadow obviously go hand in hand, but you want to do what works best for you and best for your eye color. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, you thought that color charts were from kindergarten, but we have that that we're going to be using with complementary colors because that's what you're going to use to find the right color for you. So for instance, the blue eyes that we were going to talk about first, mm -hmm. across the way is more of an orange coral color, and those are the, exactly the colors of shadow that you're going to use to make your blue eyes pop. So whether you're using a shimmer or a glitter or a matte shadow, it's more so the color itself than the actual style of the shadow. So you can play around, test different things uh, to see what works best for your eye, but definitely anything in the copper family, the orange family, and then if you're going to use an eyeliner, more of a soft brown definitely makes your blue eyes pop. Okay. okay. And now brown eyes. Yes. Brown eyes, you can do a blue shadow, you can do a purple shadow, oh, or like you can do I was just gonna purple. Say, I did put some so purple on hold, today. Hold, hold, yeah. We'll still look right there at Steven. Okay. Hi, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> close your eyes the a purple. little bit. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. No, you can totally see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so brown eyes definitely go well with purple shadow, blue shadow, a um, little bit of gold and warm brown tones. Uh, and then if you want to go a little bit out of the norm, you can try a burgundy, no, you can try a purple mascara instead of your normal like black brown mm -hmm. which is what we have in that um, packaging right in front of you yes okay. that is going to be a purple mascara and again this is only eye color it doesn't matter about complexion hair color correct. anything like that correct right? correct because okay. we're basing all this off of eye color today okay how about green eyes? So the next one that we're going to do is green eye and the green is going to work across with complementary. You can see a red or an orange. So we have a rose colored palette which has different shades of red on here in the front mm -hmm. and you can see it has a mix of a red shimmer, an orange matte, a red matte and then the one next to it has all kinds of golden shimmery and matte tones that you can also use. There you go. Thank you Mike for moving mm -hmm. that over. So you see that gold color that's in there? 
that would play off of green eyes so, so pretty. And then again, if you want to go a little out of your comfort zone, you can try a deep burgundy eyeliner or mascara to really make the green eyes pop. Now, I would think hazel eyes would be very mm -hmm. close to green eyes, yeah. but different altogether, right? Totally different <laughs> okay. because you have flecks of gold, you have flecks of brown. Um, Fiona, I would say definitely you have like a mix of hazel and green. I do. They're real green today yeah. because of the dress. It looks They're so right. pretty. <laughs> um, They're but like my size. Like some days they look really blue. Well, yeah. When I wear blue, yeah, blue orange, and it, yeah. it reflects off. When, so. yeah. With the orange eyeshadow, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. Um, so for hazel eyes, because there's so many different hints of color in there, you can have so many different options. You have green shadows that you can use to really pull out the greens. You can use purple shadows, whether it be matte or shimmer, to bring out the brown. And if you want to bring out the gold flecks in the uh, hazel eye, you can do a golden shadow as well. And can't leave out gray eyes very quickly. Correct. Gray. I mean, they're not the most common, but they're obviously so, so pretty. In order to bring out the um, gray, you want to do more of like a brown nude because you have that contrast, the complementary colors, and then a really pretty soft smoky eye. Believe it or not, the, the smoky, like charcoal black brings out the gray even though it's like silver and black together. And if you didn't catch all that or you need a little consultation, you can just uh, Yeah, send us a DM. Okay. We specialize, the boutique, obviously Eye Candy Boutique specializes in plus size clothing. But if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer in the DMs. And you still do live sales every Wednesday, right? Okay. It, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. We do have a promo. You can do SA Live 2023 for 15% off of our website at heyeyecandy.com. Great information as always. And Thank for more information for on Eye Candy Boutique, go to our website, salive.com. Click on the SA on SA Live tab. Scan that QR code right there. So good to see you, dear. Thank you for having me. I'm Tati Amara. Stay tuned for Insider Deals coming up on SA Live. And next, five pies go in, one pie comes out the champion. It's an amateur baking competition starring the SA Live team. The tasting, the judging begins straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. Oh, dramatic music and everything. <laughs> Welcome back to SA Live. The winner bakes it all. It's time for the third annual SA Live Pie Baking Competition. Ladies and gentlemen, five homemade pies from the SA Live team are going head to head, crust to crust, slice to slice, however you want to say it, to see who can bake two pie fiction. Yes. yes. And Jen Reisman, owner of Rooster Crow Bakery, joins us once again to be our fabulous judge. Keep what are fair. you doing? Keep all right, it fair. All right. Keep it fair. Here, okay, okay. Are those just ones? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I always thought you I'm going to need more for that, that for my bakery. In your wallet. Okay. All right. Okay, Jen, what are some of the things you're going to be looking for when you judge these pies? I, you know, the first thing I look for is like who made their own crust? Mm. Interesting. That's what I want to see first. Who made their own crust? <laughs> Um, how, you know, how well did it slice and, you know, how pretty is it? Like how visually, uh, you appealing. know, engaging, appealing mm -hmm. is it to me? Okay. okay. That's what I'm looking for. And then flavor. All right. So here's how it will work. Okay. We've got the five pies. Okay. Jen is going to go ahead and taste. And then okay. what she's going to do is pick the top so two pies in just a little bit. We'll do the first pie first. Okay. We'll do yeah, the first taste, pie first. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So we're going to go order. And then we'll go to break and we're going to come back okay. and announce the absolute winner. So. First <coughs> contestant oh is SA Live great. host Mike. I'm taking back the crown, Oster Hage. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's, Mike's, look at that picture. Is that your headshot? <laughs> okay, that Mike's, headshot's from like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mike's chest pie was the winner of the first pie competition. He was once an actor and starred in a Domino's pizza commercial, and he may be the only person at KSAT who brings a briefcase to work every day. To carry a delicious this year, pie like this. <laughs> this year, he's making a Texas trash pie combination of sweet and salty, creamy and crunchy. It's a southern favorite, mixing snack flavors like pretzels, chocolate chips, graham crackers, coconuts, and pecans. All right, so she has Best sampled pie you've ever had in it. that pie. <laughs> you know, none of the other contestants can Straight up talk to the judge That's while she's tasting. That's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next pie is SA Live producer trainee Richard, the quiet assassin Balthasar's pie. Richard, okay. 
has a team entry. There he is with his girlfriend, Caressa, who helped make the pie. They are both gamers and they met in film class. They made a Dutch apple pie and this was the first time making this pie. They've made classic apple pies before but felt like it didn't have as much flavor as they would have liked. However, Richard loves a good streusel topping on any dessert, so he's excited to try this one for the first time. Richard is usually uh, the assistant, you know, because Caressa is the pro. That is a very good streusel topping, Richard. Okay. Yes, seriously. All right, next we have SA Live producer John What's a Pie Mar. All right, John has another team entry. He had help from his wife, Amber. Amber and John love to travel and explore new places together. They like to joke that John married Amber because of her superior cooking abilities, and John <laughs> hates coming up with fun facts about himself. <laughs> Today, they made a creamalicious banana pie. It's the first time they made it, and it's inspired by the banana Pretty pudding good. from Magnolia Bakery in New York City and the banana pecan cream pie from Corner Cafe in Kansas City, uh, Missouri. So Amber's a therapist, so this pie just might cure what ails you. How that's, is it? That's pretty good. It's great. It's, it's great. great. Okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. All right. Next, we have SA Live director uh, <laughs> Jeffrey de Paris Saldana. Okay. okay. Yes. Oh, he's fancy. Yes, yes. He's been to France. Okay. <laughs> Jeff's banana cream pie was last year's winner. He's an Emmy winning director. He has seen every episode of Saved by the Bell and has a giant crush on Scarlett Johansson. Did he write this or did we write this for him? Okay. <laughs> to escape to escape this January weather, Jeff is imagining being at a beautiful beach at a tropical resort sipping on a pina colada. Therefore, he's making a pina colada pie. How's it taste? Okay, it's tropical. It's a, it's pineapple. I miss pineapple, so I like I like tasting it. You know. And the little chunks in there too add a little right, to do right. With the it's different. There's stuff going on. I can tell he made his crust. I'm happy with that. Ooh! All right, it was his first time making that pie, so he's crossing his fingers. It's a no bake pie except for the <laughs> graham cracker crust. Yep. All right, our final entry is from SA Live producer Robert. I got your pie right here, Morin. Robert has another team entry with his husband, Renee. They're both dog lovers. And they love to go uh, to vacation in Vegas, but don't like to gamble and can quote, word for word, nearly every episode of Bob's Burgers. This year, they made a pistachio pie, and it's an easy no-bake pie based on a holiday dessert their families make every year. You'll taste flavors of cream cheese, pineapple, and marshmallows. Jen. So. What do you think? You know, I love classic. I love classic vintage pies, mm -hmm. and you know, and green's my favorite color. So I mean, I you know, I right when I saw that pie with the cherries, I was like, oh man, that's gonna, mm -hmm. that's gonna be special. So you have okay. to pick your top two okay. right now. Right now. Then we'll pick. You know, I, I've got my top two, and right. we'll see if I match you. So go ahead. I'm gonna say, you know. I uh, I love the Dutch apple, and you know it's, I'm a trashy girl in a trashy world. So you know your pie too. Oh, are the top two. The apple and the and the trash pie. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! So that is Mike and uh, and uh, Richard. Uh, Richard. Yeah. Richard. Okay. Mike and Richard. Okay. Here we go. So three pies eliminated. Two are left in the running. One of our two finalist pies will be crowned the winner. And if you want to try these recipes yourself, you know they're on our website, salive.com. Just go to the As Seen on SA Live tab, and a few of them are borrowed recipes, right? Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes. Okay. All right. Coming up next on SA Live, I've got your insider deals. Back to SA Live right here in beautiful historic Market Square. If you look in that window right there, that's where we were, right here. So, <laughs> hi, here we are. So, all right, there is a great deal to get you cooking healthy this week. Insider Deals expert Tati Amare has a great deal on Cuisinart food processor to chop all the fruits, nuts, and veggies, and she has some other fun finds too. Well, you all know that I love a good deal and I love sharing them even more. I have some awesome items that are stylish, practical, and super useful. To get shopping, just scan the QR code on your screen or head over to MorningSave.com and look for the insider deals. Now, first up, the Tamborat Half Carat Total Weight Inside Out Oval Hoop Earrings are what's trending in jewelry. 
Now these gorgeous hoops are ideal for all day wear from work to a night out. And I love that we have the option of 14 karat plated rose gold, yellow gold, or white gold. Now I'm getting one to match each and every outfit and I'm wearing the rose gold today, which I love. With Shining Cupid Zirconia featured inside and out, it's no surprise that these are a customer favorite on MorningSave.com. Usually this highly rated set will put you back as much as $90, but with this insider deal, you can get a pair for $19.99, a huge discount of 78%, and now you can enjoy some bling without breaking the bank. Now let's keep leveling up our wardrobes with my next find that is both stylish and fabulously practical. The MKF Collection by Mia K. Salome Large Expandable Crossbody Bag is the best of both worlds and has a sleek design that's available in 20 colors to match any look. And it has enough compartments for everything to have its own organized and designated spot. Now this means no more frustration digging around the bottom of your bag to find your lipstick or your keys. The MKF brand is always a customer favorite on Morning Save. My customers love the high quality vegan leather and stylish and smart design. Now we've seen this for as much as $209, but with our insider deal, you can get one of these for $29.99, a whopping 86% off. These days we're all juggling multiple devices. And how many times have you woken up only to realize you didn't charge your phone, earbuds, or smartwatch? I have an awesome solution that charges everything in one place and also doubles as an alarm clock, saving you time and frustration. This is the Lifestyle Advanced Trio Powerhouse Charging Station. It's a wireless charging station that works by simply placing your devices on the platform. And it takes up very little space, which is always ideal. Now with this clever design, we'll wake up ready to go. Now we've seen these for as much as $100, but you can snag this insider deal for $29.99, a gigantic discount of 70%. Now this next deal is the kind that my money-saving dreams are made of. This is something that I wanted for my kitchen for a very long time, and now it's available for an incredible price point. I'm talking about the Cuisinart 7 Cup Prep 7 Food Processor. Now this beauty can handle just about any prep tasks, and the best part is that it can handle seven cups of ingredients in a matter of seconds. So go ahead and make that party-sized bowl of salsa or prep those veggies for a soup in a flash. Now Morning Save bought Cuisinart's remaining inventory, getting a huge discount that's being passed on to all of us, and this is an insanely good deal. We've seen this item for as much as $235, but with this exclusive insider deal, it's only $74.99, an incredible discount of 68% off. This kitchen staple is not to be missed out on at this amazing price point. I am no, I'm not gonna miss out on it, and I don't want you guys to miss out on these fabulous finds. So to snag these insider deals, scan the QR code on your screen or head over to morningsave.com and look for the insider deals. Remember, these are only available while supplies last and they won't last long. I do need a food processor like that. I know. So. I just figured you were looking at that Cuisinart. Well, yeah, because every time, you know, it's like, well, you know, I need a new one. And I never yeah. think about it until now. But and now one, and one third, 75 bucks for that thing. Mm -hmm. That's not for a seven quart, too. Sorry, so. <clears throat> not bad at all. To yeah. find these deals and more, just go to morningsave.com and look for insider deals. And you'll find a link with all the details, of course, on ksat.com. Next on the show, pie, oh pie. Someone's about to be a winner. It's the final round of our SA Live pie baking competition and someone gets crowned the winner. Let's rodeo San Antonio. The cattle are coming. Live from downtown San Antonio. The Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. There they are. Saturday, February 4th at 11 a.m. KSAT 12 coverage powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Welcome back to SA Live. We're about to announce the winner of our SA Live pie baking competition. Our judge, Jen Reisman, owner of Rooster Crow Bakery, joins us once again. And remember, our top two finalists are... Mike Osterhage alongside Richard Balthasar. Mike made the Texas trash pie, and Richard is the Dutch apple pie. Okay, Jen, so before you announce the winner, okay. tell us what you enjoyed about each of these pies. 
I, you know, with the Texas trash pie, you know, I really liked the textures. There was stuff going on. There was chocolate. I love chocolate. Um, so that's what, you know, really caught my attention. And then, you know, with the Dutch apple pie, you know, I, I eat pies for a living, so I appreciate <laughs> things that aren't too sweet, that they're, they're tart, you know, and they have that balance to it. So okay. that's why each one of those were my top two. All right. Yes, drum roll, please. Okay. So who is the winner of the third annual SAI Amateur Pie It was hard. It was hard. Dutch Apple. Classic. Congratulations to Richard over there. All yes, right. Um, warm with a scoop ice cream on top would taste delicious with this. <laughs> okay. Richard, how do you feel? Uh, I feel great, and I want to accept this award on behalf of my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, way to go, Carissa, yes! <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone, of course, for participating, and thank you, Jen Reisman thank of Roosevelt Pro Bakery for yes, being our judge. You. For more on these recipes, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. <laughs> A little confetti with your pie. Confetti with the pie. All right, tomorrow on Essay Live. These scientists have brewed up some tasty ideas. We check out a San Antonio craft brewery's new expanded tap room and see what's on their menu. Plus, we reveal the Vaquero Cookall's final look at the champion's buckle and get unmatched rodeo gear from the local artisan that made the cookoff's prize buckle. That's tomorrow, 1 p.m., right here on SA Live. All right, earlier we asked you, what is your favorite flavor of mm. pie? Jamie says, lemon meringue. Coconut cream pie, yum, says Linda. Lisa Ann, a banana cream pudding pie. Oh, getting a lot of nods here on that one. Buttermilk pie, kind of like that chest pie. Oh, yeah, yes. sure. Sandra says, custard pie, love it, can't get enough of it. Another coconut cream pie. Okay, how about a good Dutch apple pie with a nice little crumbly top on top, baked by Richard's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically, yeah, basically. Are you going to talk any trash about his Texas trash pie? <laughs> um, no, I, um, I'd just say mine was really good. The, yours, was, yours was delicious. Yeah. Yes, yours well was done, well wonderful. done. Wonderful, so congratulations, sir. <laughs> Thank you. That warmed up with a scoop of ice cream on top. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, oh, yeah, loser has loser to sweep has up to sweep. the confetti. <laughs>